Preface to Songs of the Sea and Lays of the Land. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Stephen Christie. Songs of the Sea and Lays of the Land by Charles Godfrey Leland. Preface. Among the songs in this collection are the Brand New Ballads, already known more or less to the public, several of them having an American newspaper circulation, while a few are given at times in public readings. Since, I have learned, for example, that In Nevada was one of the stock pieces of Mr. Clifford Harrison, they now reappear amended and with additions. In The Songs of the Sea, the reader will not fail to observe that three or four such as The Mermaid and Time for Us to Go, are not by me at all. They are sailor songs of the olden time, introduced as suggestions for other lyrics, as I have indeed declared in the text, and also to aid in the main purpose or idea which inspires the whole collection, they being in this respect like stones from more ancient edifices built into new houses, as was the want of men in the Middle Age. This main purpose was to set forth with scrupulous care, as of a statue photographed from many sides, the mariner of the sailing, not steaming, ship, who is now rapidly passing away, although some tens of thousands of the species are still to be found in the remoter routes of travel. This kind of man should be interesting, because he is almost the only one who is drawn into his calling by a desire to rove about the world and lead an adventurous, reckless, manly life. Into this life entered, I may say, as vitalizing elements, shipwrecks and disasters of the sea, the extremes of discipline and dissipation, as well as those of cynical skepticism and superstition, the seeing, like Ulysses, cities and men, and the consciousness, so clear to undeveloped minds and smaller natures, of belonging to a peculiar class. This I have borne in mind most earnestly, and those who perceive it will also find that in this spirit the following notes and sketches in song illustrate, I trust accurately, a consistent ideal text, and that all the songs unite to form a single poem. As for the many scraps, chanties, choruses, sayings, similes, and bits of sea lore worked up into the lyrics here and there, I make no attempt whatever to indicate what is borrowed. All that I can say of it is that if the mere gathering of stones is all the merit of making a mosaic picture, as many seem to think, then I could claim little merit for originality. But as this is not a folklore book, in which a writer is held sternly accountable, to give authority for every word, and as a mass of notes would have simply defeated the whole aim of the book, I have preferred making myself amenable to the charge of plagiarism to boring my reader. Even as an Italian devoted servant, of whom I once heard, preferred to be carried off by the police on the charge of stealing oranges, rather than awaken and disturb his master, who could have explained the matter. I can, however, truly say that as regards ideas, incidents, tales, turns of speech and idioms, current sayings, and so on, from poetry down to vulgarity, I have literally taken so much from sailors themselves that the work, if analyzed, would be a curiosity of collocation, like the poems made up entirely of proverbs, or the sermon of texts. Here I should mention my obligation to more than one ancient mariner, and specially to my old friend Captain Stead, now so long a dweller at the Langham Hotel, for advising about and revising these ballads. These friends, having carefully studied the work and corrected or modeled its every sentence into ship shape, have been kind enough to assure me that it would hold its own in the forecastle, as a real thing and not an imitation, which saying uttered in sooth and truth, especially by a friend of forty years' experience in sailing vessels, mostly before the war, was to me greatly encouraging. What I have above written about the Songs of the Sea is equally true of the other ballads in this volume. They also form a series of eccentric pictures of American life after the war, brought together not like chance pictures in a scrapbook, but as I before said, to carry out one idea in reference to a special subject. 
in this spirit and to this end were they written from current prose tales nor have i ever forgotten that there is in them for the future a kind of folklore which is never so apparent to those who live in it as those who inherit it when i was a small boy there was in my aunt's kitchen in milford massachusetts a cheese knife which had no special interest to anyone save me because it had been the very sword carried by general eaton in his famous march over the desert to attack algiers nowadays it would be greatly prized so it is sometimes worth while to think of these things which we now possess and how rapidly they are hastening to become curiosities i myself having lived to see every object familiar to me in youth become bric-a-brac in the last age everything not in the newest fashion was despised in this there are, is a highly cultured class just beginning to show itself beyond the realists and disciples of mental analytical chemistry who look alternatively at the past and future even as janus on the capitol saw all that was or ever yet would be there may be a few among the jealous guardians or spokes around the hub who may demand by what right i invade the sacred precincts of boston and sing about its past well my boyhood was half past in boston or near it there the romance of sailor life which was marvellous in those times imbued me and then and there in common with my mates i devoured the mariner's chronicle shipwrecks and disasters of the sea tales of the buccaneers and listened with avidity to the tales of those who had been on the briny deep nearly all my first cousins had at one time or other run away and gone to sea or taken long voyages among the former were benjamin stimson the s of two years before the mast charles leland who afterward grew like samuel jackson to the height of seven feet and samuel godfrey from these and many more i learned an incredible number of sea stories and songs none of which i ever forgot being to an extraordinary degree accustomed to keep repeating to myself these stranger legends of the olden time hence it comes that i have in my mind such vivid memories of the old north end of boston i would say in conclusion what will be apparent enough to many that these ballads make no great pretense to be poetry they consist of incidents or small motives cast into rhyme or measure as the easiest method of giving them a certain value just as a tune brings out a song most rhymers are criticized more or less severely for pretending to be poets all that i can claim for this volume is that it is a kind of collection of curiosities which as they have seemed to me to be worth remembering will i trust be regarded by others as worth reading charles godfrey leland florence 1894 end of preface The Old Tavern by Charles Godfrey Leland Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson In the north end of Boston long ago, Although tis yet within my memory, There were of gabled houses many a row With overhanging stories two or three, And many with half-doors over whose end, Leaning upon her elbows, The good wife at eventide conversed with many a friend of all the little chances of their life small ripples in a stream which ran full slow in the north end of boston long ago and mid these houses was a hostelry frequented by the people of the sea known as the boy and barrel from its sign a jolly urchin on a cask of wine bearing the words which puzzled every eye orbis intactu minet heaven knows why even there a bit of latin made a show in the north end of boston long ago and many a sailor when his cruise was o'er bore straight for it soon as he touched the shore in many a stormy night upon the sea he had thought upon the boy and of the spree he'd have when there and let all trouble go in the north end of boston long ago there like their vessels in a friendly port met many mariners of every kind 
spinning strange yarns of many a varied sort well sheltered from the ocean and the wind in a long low dark room they lounged at ease strange men were there from many a distant land and there above the high old chimney-piece were curiosities from many a strand which often made strange tales and memories flow in the north end of boston long ago and there i often sat to hear those tales from men who had passed through storm and fight and fire of mighty icebergs and stupendous whales of shipwrecked crews and of adventures dire until the thought came to me on a time while i was listening to that merry throng that i would write their stories out in rhyme and weave it into many a sailor's song that men might something of the legends know of the north end of boston long ago first it was said that captain kidd in truth had revelled in that tavern with his crew and there it was he lost the golden tooth which brought him treasure and the gossips knew moll pitcher dwelt there in the days of yore and peter rugg had stopped before the door tom walker there did with the devil go in the north end of boston long ago nor had i long to wait for at the word some one observed that he had seen in spain a captain hung which abner chapin heard and said i too upon the spanish main met with a man well known unto us all who nearly hung a captain general he told the tale and i did rhyme it so in the north end of boston long ago in the poem this recording is in the public domain el capitan general by charles godfrey leland read for LibriVox.org by stephen christie there was a captain general who ruled in vera cruz and what we used to hear of him was always evil news he was a pirate on the sea a robber on the shore the senor don alonzo esteban san salvador there was a yankee skipper who roundabout did roam his name was stephen folger and nantucket was his home and having gone to vera cruz he had been skinned full sore by the senor don alonzo esteban san salvador but having got away alive though all his cash was gone he said if there is vengeance i will surely try it on and i do wish i may be damned if i don't clear the score with senor don alonzo esteban san salvador he shipped a crew of seventy men well armed men were they and sixty of them in the hold he darkly stowed away and sailing back to vera cruz was sighted from the shore by the senor don alonzo esteban san salvador with twenty-five soldados he came on board so pleased and said maldito yankee again your ship is seized how many sailors have you got said folger ten no more to the captain don alonzo esteban san salvador but come into my cabin and take a glass of wine i do suppose as usual i'll have to pay a fine i have got some old madeira and we'll talk the matter o'er my captain don alonzo esteban san salvador and as over that madeira the captain general boozed it seemed to him as if his head was getting quite confused for it happened that some morphine had travelled from the store to the glass of don alonzo esteban san salvador what is it makes the vessel roll what sounds are these i hear it seems as if the rising waves were beating on my ear oh it's the breaking of the surf just that and nothing more my captain don alonzo esteban san salvador the governor was in a sleep which muddled all his brains the seventy men had got his gang and put them all in chains and when he woke the following day he could not see the shore for he was out on the blue water the don san salvador now do you see that yard arm and understand the thing said captain folger for all from that yard arm you shall swing for forty thousand dollars you must pay me from your store my captain don alonzo esteban san salvador the capitano took a pin the order he did sign oh senor yankee but you charge amazing high for wine 
but twas not till the draft was paid that they let him go ashore el senor don alonzo esteban san salvador the greatest sharp some day will find another sharper wit it always makes the devil laugh to see a biter bit it takes two spaniards any day to come a yankee o'er even two like don alonzo esteban san salvador and when this tale was told another man cried out i'll swear tis true as true can be unto his health we'll have all round a can for captain folger is well known to me now i will sing first lines of uncle sam and he who can shall add at once a second i'll call you one by one now here i am and he who balks shall be the loser reckoned and pay for drinks all round all right they roared now then begin for we are all on board end of poem this recording is in the public domain uncle sam by charles godfrey leyland recorded for LibriVox.org by jude when there's rain and shine together yo heave ho uncle sam is in the weather yo heave ho when the sun shines through a fog yo heave ho uncle samuel drinks his grog yo heave ho when the blue sky shows in pieces yo heave ho those are uncle samuel's breeches yo heave ho when a cloud is low and flat yo heave ho that is uncle samuel's hat yo heave ho when the wind is loud and bad yo heave ho then old sam is getting mad yo heave ho when the wind begins to bellow yo heave ho uncle sam is in the cellar yo heave ho when the sky is clean and red yo heave ho uncle sam is gone to bed yo heave ho when you hear the wind a roaring yo heave ho that is uncle sam a snoring yo heave ho when you see the lightning spooning yo heave ho then old uncle sam's harpooning yo heave ho when you hear the wind a barking yo heave ho uncle sam has gone a sharking yo heave ho when you see a santo corpus yo heave ho uncle sam is arter a porous yo heave ho when the water gabbles too much yo heave ho uncle sam is talking dutch yo heave ho when the seahawk's scream is heard yo heave ho he wants to know if there's dutch on board yo heave ho when the winds before the rain yo heave ho soon you can make sail again yo heave ho belay that song i say tis getting weary cried out a voice let's change to mother carey end of poem this recording is in the public domain mother carey by charles godfrey leyland recorded for LibriVox.org by jute with the wind old mother carey yo ho o churns the sea to make her dairy yo ho o when you see a storm a brewing yo ho o that is mother carey's doing yo ho o when you see mother carey's chickens yo ho o then look out to catch the dickens yo ho o when you hear the icebergs rattle yo ho o those are mother carey's cattle yo ho o when you see them split a halving yo ho o then mother carey's cows are carving yo ho o when you see a flying fish yo ho o lose no time but to make your wish 
Yo ho o, oh. Irish pennons when they're flying. Yo ho o, oh. Step old Mother Carey crying. Yo ho o, oh. When the seagulls dip for slush. Yo ho o, oh. Mother Carey stirs the mush. Yo ho o, oh. When one seagull follows you. Yo ho o, oh. Mother Carey soon makes it too. Yo ho o. Oh. When the seagulls fly by two, yo ho o, oh, soon good luck will come to you. Yo ho o, oh, when the seagulls fly by threes, yo ho o, oh, soon you'll have a spanking breeze. Yo ho o, oh, if seven follow you into port, yo ho o, oh, there the sailors will have good sport. Yo ho o. Oh, when a rope trails in the water, yo ho o, oh, that is Mother Carey's garter. Yo ho o, oh, when the clouds are red as roses, yo ho o, oh, those are Mother Carey's poses. Yo ho o, oh, if you want to win your Mary, yo ho o, oh, throw out a biscuit to Mother Carey. Yo ho o, oh, and so. They would have shanties all night long, but someone broke it with another song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Bird Crew by Charles Godfrey Leland Read for LibriVox.org by Alexandra Selenius The albatross is the captain and boss. Haul away, boys, haul away. The seagull queers are the officers. Haul away, boys, haul away. And the carry chickens, as I guess, is everyone an ABS. Haul away, boys, haul away. I've heard, said Shepin, many folk agree. Those birds are souls of sailors lost at sea. And often one round the vessel flies to give us warning ere the storms arise. Talking of spirits in the vasty deep, said Estra Bullard, late of Marblehead, there's one at least who never goes to sleep, and mighty little good of him is said. His special dispensation is to watch the bottom of the ocean and to see it don't fall out, for if it did, we catch the very direst kind of misery. For all the water running through the hole would leave it dry as you can understand, and from the Arctic to the Thudder Pole, it would be one thundering lot of empty land. And thereupon, in his south-wester tones, he let us have the song of Davy Jones. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Davy Jones by Charles Godfrey Leland Read for LibriVox.org by Tony Scheinman down in the sea among sand and stones there lives the old fellow called davy jones when storms come up he sighs and groans and that is the singing of davy jones his chest is full of dead men's bones and that is the locker of davy jones davy is welsh you may hear by his tones but a regular welsher is davy jones whenever a fish gets drowned he moans so tender-hearted is Davy Jones. Thousands of ships the old man owns, but none go a-sailing for Davy Jones. Well, since you talk of the bottom of the sea, said Enoch Doolittle of Salem Town, I know a yarn that beats you full and free, because, d'ye know, it takes you deeper down, and if you're taken down, of course you're beat. That's so, cried all, so now your yarn repeat. All right, quoth Doolittle, I'll serve it hot, because, d'ye see, it's called the devil's pot. 
But for I dive into the salty brine, Give me a gill of white New England wine. Take one all round to benefit the pub. Now for the bottom of the pickle tub. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Devil's Pot by Charles Godfrey Leland. Read for LibriVox.org by Zachary Gorelick. Note. The Devil's Pot is a place on the North Atlantic route where, according to sailors, there is always bad weather. End of note. The Devil's Pot. There's a place where you see the Atlantic heave, like water boiling hot, where you come with grief and with joy you leave, and they call it the Devil's Pot. Now there was a witch in the good old time, and she had such power, they say, through rocks or stones or sand or lime, she could always make her way. One night on a broom she went with a whirr, the devil he saw her fly, and the devil he fell in love with her as she went sailing by. She flew like the devil to scape away, and the devil so did he, and she jumped from her broom without delay, and she dived to the bottom of the sea. And she bored a hole when she got down, and round and round she twirled, and closed it behind as she went on, till she went straight through the world. And the devil he dived in the water deep, and he made it boil like pitch, as he roared and raved with many a leap, but he never could find the witch. And still he stirs it by night and day, and seeks and finds her not, and that is the reason the sailors say why it's called the Devil's Pot. They say that there are witches everywhere, said Jones of Chesapeake, a livin' free, some in the rocks, some flying in the air, and some in course, like fishes in the sea. I've often heard strange voices in the night. They want no birds, I'll swear, nor any sitch. One called me once by name, it give me fright, and that I'm sartin was a water witch. One can't in natural wise account for that. All you can call it is a Mr. E. But there are witches, I will bet a hat, and so I'll sing the song of one, two, three. For strengthen all your healths, no more, he said, but in a good round voice went straight ahead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. One, two, three, by Charles Godfrey Leland, read for LibriVox.org, by Alexandra Selenius. I saw three witches, as the wind blew cold, in a red light to the lee. Bold they were, and overbold, as they sailed over the sea, calling for one, two, three, calling for one, two, three. And I think I can hear it a ringing in my ear, a calling for the one, two, three. And clouds came over the sky, and the wind it blew hard and free, and the waves grew bold and overbold as we sailed over the sea, howling for one, two, three, howling for their one, two, three. Oh, I think I can hear it a ringing in my ear, a howling for their one, two, three. And a storm came roaring on, such a storm as I never did see. And the storm, it was bold and overbold, and as bad as a storm could be, a roaring for its one, two, three, a howling for its one, two, Three. Oh, I think I can hear it a howling in my ear, a growling for its one, two, three. And a wave came over the deck, as big as a wave could be, and it took away the captain and a mate and a man. It had got the one, two, three, and it went down with the one, two, three. Oh, I think I can hear. It's a rolling in my ear, as it went down with the one, two, three. This being sheared, I said, some time ago, I made a song in the Italian tongue, 
about a witch and a pirate, which for you shall, if you like, be now an English song. No, give it first, cries Elton Stall. By jingo, in its own nature all, I tell you in lingo, what I don't know of ain't worth a cent. Even to Rome I several times have went. In Naples, too, I've had full many a turn, and no old Spartivento like a darn. And most of us, I reckon, though we're Yankee, can go the Dago or some lingua franchi. We ain't so ignorant of what we know. So go ahead, signor, pretissimo. If we don't catch the scent, twill be a pity. So disencouraged, I began my ditty. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. La Bella Strega by Charles Godfrey Leland Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia La Bella Strega Era una bella strega che si bagnava alla riva Vennero i pirati, lei presero cattiva il vento era in poppa sull'onde la nave balò la donna lacrimante al capitan parlò o oh, signor capitano o oh, capitan del mar darò cento ducati se tu mi lasci andar non prenderò cento ducati tu costi molto più io te vendrò al sultano disse il capitano per mille zeghini d'oro vi stimi troppo giù non vuoi i cento ducati ebben tu non li avrai o un amante amato non mi abbandona mai essa sede sul ponte principiò a cantar vieni il mio amante da lontano il vento si mette a mughiar forte e più forte la tempesta ruggiò gridava il capitano io credo che il tuo amante è il vento che corre in ante, ovvero il diavolo. Forte e più forte la procella urlò, sono rocce davanti e il vento vien di dietro, benvenuto sei tu, mio amante, la bella donna cantò. Vattene al tuo amante, all'inferno a cantar, disse il capitano e gettò la donna fuori della nave nel mar ma come un gabbiano sull'onde e savolò o oh mio capitano non sarai appicato ma sarai annegato per sempre addio that stand good dago cried jack saltonstall blamed if i didn't understand it all for the best songs are easiest understood now then let's hear if the other side's as good a song is like a bird cause birds do sing so carve us out the second breast and wing and with your anthem bid our hearts rejoice and courage thus i lifted up my voice end of poem this recording is in the public domain the beautiful witch by charles godfrey leland read for librivox dot org by sonia the beautiful witch a pretty witch was bathing by the beach one summer day there came a boat with pirates who carried her away the ship had a breeze behind her over the waves went she o oh, signor capitano o oh, captain of the sea i'll give you a hundred ducats if ye will set me free i will not take a hundred you're worth much more you know i'll sell you to the sultan for a thousand golden sequins you put yourself far too low you will not take a hundred very well then let em be but i have a constant lover who as you may discover will never abandon me on the deck before the rover the witch began to sing oh come to me my lover and the wind as it stole over began to howl and ring louder and ever louder became the tempest's roar the captain in a passion thus at the lady swore i believe that your windy lover is the devil and nothing more 
wilder and ever wilder the tempest raged and rang there are rocks ahead and the wind dead aft thank you my love the lady laughed as unto the wind she sang oh go with your cursed lover to inferno to sing for me so cried the angry captain and threw the lady over to sink in the stormy sea but changing into a seagull over the waves she flew oh captain captain bold sang she tis true you've missed the gallows tree but now you'll drown in the foaming sea oh captain forever adieu talking of witches and magicianers cried out jack saltonstall of newburyport they are the devil's own parishioners and i knew one of a peculiar sort because he was a sailor had he been a lawyer now it wouldn't seem so queer for conjurers mong us ain't often seen and he was the kind who ain't small beer possessing cash enough to roll in bliss however that may be the story is this end of poem this recording is in the public domain the witch's box by charles godfrey leland read for LibriVox.org by stephen christie once when i went upon a trip likewise to the southern sea we had a man upon the ship and a wonderful man was he a handsomer man i never did spy at home or in any port but there was something in his eye of a most peculiar sort and all in trinidado's port was a woman fair and rich with her my messmate did consort and i heard she was a witch her eyes like his had a greenish glare they seemed to be quite of a level and the general look of the loving pair was exactly the look of the devil now when it was time to up and lift and the ship must leave the docks he came aboard with her parting gift a brown little wooden box now this man had hardly a shirt to his back when he started on this trip and the mate declared that such a jack was a regular shame to the ship then this man he winked a dreadful wink and he said to the mate i'll be floored but i've got more clothes in my box i think than all of the men on board now his box was only one foot square and what was our surprise when he opened it and pulled out a pair of shirts before our eyes next came a hat and a jacket blue with trousers of the best for everything was nice and new and so on with all the rest and when he was dressed all spick and span we observed upon our oaths that we didn't believe even our old man had got such a suit of clothes twenty-four hours arter i heard him say and i thought it was very strange i never wear my clothes but a day and now it is time to change i make you a gift of em fair and plain with a quid of tobacco to boot saying this he opened his box again and pulled out another suit and the same thing happened the very next day at about the very same bells he took off his second suit so gay and gave it to somebody else and so it happened every day again till he rigged us all from his store and such a dandy lot of men were never in a ship before then we never had any scrimmages for fear of spilling our slops we looked like the graven images before the tailor's shops but a man named knox from edinburgh town always took the thing amiss and often remarked with a doubtful frown there's something irreligious in this so one day when our friend had opened his box before we could prevent up behind him came mr knox and dropped in his new testament there came a flash of lightning bright and an awful thunder's roar and the box and the sailor went clean out of sight and we never beheld em more and all to ashes and all to wreck went our clothes and we looked forlorn for there we were standing on the deck as naked as we were born and this is the lesson short and small which we learned from our liberal friend that the things which cost you nothing at all never come to any good in the end 
and when the laugh at this had died away mose brown of bristol in the whaling line said mermaids are the witches of the sea which in good looks are really superfine and on this subject i'll give you a song which i dare say y'all already know but anyway it isn't very long though it was made a hundred years ago i guess that mermaids were much plentier then perhaps they are scared of steamboats and the swell which drives the fish as foxes do a hen so like the steamers i will now propel end of poem this recording is in the public domain the mermaid by charles godfrey leland read for LibriVox.org by tony Scheinman. one friday morning we set sail it was not far from land when i espied a fair mermaid with a comb and a glass in her hand and the raging winds do blow 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 and the raging winds do blow and we poor sailors climbing up aloft and the landlubbers lying down below then up spoke the boy of our gallant ship and a well-spoken boy was he i've a mother and father in london town and this night they will weep for me and the raging winds do blow 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 and the raging winds do blow and we poor sailors climbing up aloft and the landlubbers lying down below then up spoke the captain of our gallant ship and a well-spoken man was he i've a wife who is living in liverpool town a wife whom i never shall see and the raging winds do blow 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 and the raging winds do blow and we poor sailors climbing up aloft and the landlubbers lying down below my wife who is living in liverpool town this night will be looking for me she may look till the sun no more goes down she may look to the bottom of the sea and the raging winds do blow 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 and the raging winds do blow and we poor sailors climbing up aloft and the landlubbers lying down below then three times around went our gallant ship and three times around went she and three times around was the end of her trip when she sank to the bottom of the sea and the raging winds do blow 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 and the raging winds do blow and we poor sailors climbing up aloft and the landlubbers lying down below there may be a few readers to whom it is necessary to point out that this first ballad of the mermaid is an old song here used as an introduction to a second by me which is of the same nature end of poem this recording is in the public domain the merman by charles godfrey leland read for LibriVox.org by hilary busby on october thirtieth twenty seventeen then another man said when that song was sung there are men like you and me who will sometimes come ashore and get sprung yet who live at the bottom of the sea for i myself knew one of that folk i believe he still lives and thrives and i'll tell you the truth without any joke how we saved one another's blessed lives i was walking one night in new york town and the moon shone bright and clear when i thought i had heard a singular sound that came from a board yard near first was a groan of misery and then a scythe of pain and a voice which wailed oh where is the sea which i shall never see again and i thought that party must be cracked or a little over the bay because the water was not in fact a half of a mile away so i looked that suffering mortal up and found sufficiently soon a man who looked like a perishing puff as he laid in the light of the moon and i said to him matey just confess what all this rose about and what was it got you into this mess and how can i get you out then this man he opened his eyes so wide no more do i ask of thee 
then carry me down to the water side and chuck me right into the sea. And I says, "'Tis a singular thing to ask, but I think it can be no sin. And anyhow, tis an easy task to carry and to pitch you in." So I picked that perishing person up and slewed him on my back, and he wriggled and moved with a many a fluff, like a codfish or a jack. But when I had carried him half the way, he seemed to be halfway done, and we had got long side of the bay. I guessed that his life was gone. But when he heard the water splash, he opened his eyes, you bet, and said, If you only will make a dash, good Lord, there's a chance for me yet. And when we came to the water's edge, I never a word did say, but carried him right to the end of the ledge and dumped him into the bay. And then he gin a yellow delight, and then he warbled a tune as he swam about in the water bright, all there in the light of the moon. And he hollered to me his parting thanks and said, I'm out of my pain. Goodbye, I'm off for the Foundland banks. Some day we shall meet again. Now when a year had passed, I found myself in a southern sea, erect for all on board were drowned and nobody saved but me. And as I sat upon the turf and looked at the water blue, a man came walking out of the surf and says to me, how do you do? I think you don't remember me. Allow me to let you know. I'm the fellow that you threw into the sea in New York a year ago. My home is down in the ocean deep, and sometimes would you think? I go ashore when men are asleep to a tavern to take a drink. My mother was a mermaid fair. She lived down in the sea, and my father, he was a Dutch sailor. So it came that I am what I be. And I can walk about on land until my clothes are dry, but that brings up to the end of my sand, for then I must surely die. And my soul sail off for Doldrum Isle, unless someone pities my pain, and carries me down where the waters bile, and puts me in on again. One turn deserves another ahoy, and John must settle with Jack. You treated me like a brother, old boy, and now I will pay you back. In this bag there's more than a thousand pound, and I give it all to you. In a Spanish galleon that money I found, it's a thing which I frequently do. But in this place you be sure to spile, so now I will give you a tip. Just walk to the other side of this isle, and there you will find a ship. You'll find her there as sure as you're born. Her name is the Clarabelle. She sails for Havana in the morn, so matey, fare you well. Farewell, for here I cannot bide. He turned his back to the shore, and walked right into the rising tide, and I never beheld him more. So we never should doubt of a mystery. There are lots of them round us still, for nobody knows what's down in the sea, and nobody ever will. Said Brown, that story now goes home to me. Folks say a witch, a wizard, and a fin are all jim partners in a devil tree. The devil himself, of course, being counted in. And of these northern conjurers I can sing. A song, if you will join me in the chorus. First, take your drinks. That is the prudent thing. We never know in life what lies before us, which having done himself he did begin, the wondrous ballad of the wizard Finn. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wizard Finn by Charles Godfrey Leland Read for LibriVox.org by Stephen Christie As I suppose you all have heard, there's no good luck with a fin on board. I can tell you that it's so. I've sailed with one, and I ought to know. For it is true, upon my word, there's no good luck with a fin on board. Eric Janssen was his name, and from Christian he came. A seemly man, all for to see, but devil a bit the man for me. For it is true, as all have heard, there's no good luck with a fin on board. From the hour he joined the ship, all went wrong in all the trip. Twas nothing but swear and growl and groan, and the weather was just the devil's own. You may reckon it all absurd, but there's no good luck with a fin on board. Our grub was spoiled from that first hour, except the vinegar, all was sour. All you heard was lubber and liar, and everything hot except the fire. 
for it is true as all accord there's no good luck with a fin on board for as the doctors all do know a fin has fins between each toe he's web-footed like a duck which is the cause of his bad luck for it is true as i have heard there's no good luck with a fin on board and when at last it got so bad that master and men were nigh gone mad a rummerin whisperin did begin that twas all along of this here fin for it is true and all on record there's no good luck with a fin on board and the long and short of this debate was that one night our second mate being as mad as a man might be pitched eric jansen into the sea for it is true unless i've erred there's no good luck with a fin on board when all at once around there came over the sea a greenish flame and the biggest whale i ever spied rose up by eric jansen's side for it is true as you may have inferred there's no good luck with a fin on board and the fin he got upon the whale and off in the flame we saw them sail hearing a song as they fell behind like women singing with the wind for it is true as all have concurred there's no good luck with a fin on board off from the ship and off the shore and eric jansen we saw no more but from that hour aboard that ship all went well for the rest of the trip for it is true upon my word as you and i have often heard people may say it's all absurd and yet it holds as i have heard and be in a fact it's on record unless the best of men have erred as you may truly have inferred in which observers have concurred there's no good luck with a fin on board that story of the fin said one to brown is of the kind which have been salted down which is the reason i suppose why you take such a lot of pains to prove it's true when tales are correct in all their fitnesses there ain't no need of forty witnesses nor one at all i guess but that's enough now listen to the song of charlie buff who always said i am a truthful man he polished off his drink and thus began end of poem this recording is in the public domain charlie buff by charles godfrey leland read for LibriVox.org by zachary gorelick oh charlie buff was his parents joy and as he always told he went to sea as a cabin boy before he was one year old chorus now this is pretty bad but it's nothing to what's a coming yet charlie he was a truthful lad and never indulged in humming End chorus. and this charlie buff always said to me to lie i cannot afford for you know i've got more truth in me than all of the rest on board i have seen in the isle of baraboo such high-sized coconuts that the natives used to split em in two and use em to make their huts i have seen the kanaka women follow a ship in full sail a thousand miles a swimmin for a bottle or a tenpenny nail i have seen the eggs of the tootlywang it's a bird in the Maldive isles and when they hatch they burst with a bang you can hear for five hundred miles from a caribou king named jocko a man of cheerful life for only a fit of tobacco i bought me a beautiful wife one night she was gone by gum but as soon as ever i missed her from the king for a glass of rum i bought her younger sister one evening for their tea her family broiled and ate her never mind says the king to me just go and pick out a better chorus now this is pretty bad yet it's nothing to what's a coming but i hear the old man a-bawling like mad so i guess i will stop my humming and chorus wall answered brown that comes it rather strong now if you like i'll sing a pirate song of which you will all have heard at times a bit i've joined em into one to make em fit like beads upon a string although i fear it's partly pirate and part mutineer end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Bold Robin Rover by Charles Godfrey Leyland. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Jude. Bold Robin Rover said to his crew, Up with the black flag and down with the blue, Up with the black boy, all men to show, Over the water and off let us go. A man of war, he hailed us, Come under my lee. See you damned, said the pirate, For I'd rather sink at sea in the blue water far out and free cruising down on the shore by the coast of barbary we met the flying dutchman by midnight he came his hull was all of hell fire his sails were all o flame fire on the main top fire on the bow fire on the gun deck fire down below four and twenty dead men those were the crew the devil on the bowsprit fiddled as she flew we gave her a broadside right in the dip just like a candle out went the ship we met a gallant vessel a sailing on the sea for mercy for mercy for mercy she did plea but the mercy we gave her we sunk her in the sea cruising down on the shore by the coast of barbary Four and twenty Spaniards, mighty men of rank, with their golden ladies, had to walk the plank over the gunwale into the sea, cruising down on the shore by the coast of Barbary. Oh, devil take the captain, and devil take the ship, and devil take the cargo, and devil take the trip, and devil take the bosun, and devil take his call, and devil take the doctor and devil take em all over the quarter over the sail into the water dead as a nail slung like a biscuit hot as a coal where the sharks may take the body and the devil take the soul then spoke grim sam of jersey as we've heard a mermaid or a witch is the same bird but of a different feather so a pirate and slaver is all one for guards to fire at for pirates kill and plunder all they catch and slavers at the same are just their match there ain't no special difference it was said that sam himself well knew the guinea trade and halfway to the devil had sent his soul by running into cuba sacks of coal and then he sang to us right merrily a slaver's song which was not writ by me end of poem this recording is in the public domain time for us to go by charles godfrey leland read for librivox.org by andy crunch with sails let fall and sheeted home and clear of ground were we we passed the bank stood round the light and sailed away to sea the wind was fair and the coast was clear and the brig was no way slow for she was built in baltimore and twas time for us to go time for us to go time for us to go for she was built in Baltimore, and twas time for us to go. A quick run to the west we had, and when we made the bight, we kept the offing all day long, and crossed the bar at night. Six hundred niggers in the hold, and seventy we did stow, and when we'd clapped the hatches on, twas time for us to go. We hadn't been three days at sea before we saw a sail, so we clapped on every inch she'd stand, although it blew a gale, and we walked along for fourteen knots for the barky she did know, as well as ever a soul on board, twas time for us to go. We carried away the royal yards, and the stunsail boom was gone, says the skipper, they may go or stand, I'm damned if I don't crook on, so the weather braces will round in, and the trysail set also, 
and we'll keep the brig free pints away, for it's time for us to go. O oh, yard arm under she did plunge in the trough of the deep seas, and her masts they freshed about like whips as she bowed before the breeze, and every yard did buckle up like a bending bow, but her spars were tough as a whalebone, and twas time for us to go. We dropped the cruiser in the night, and our cargo landed we, and ashore we went with our pockets full of dollars on the spree. And when the liquor it is out, and the locker it is low, then to sea again in the ebony trade, twill be time for us to go, time for us to go, time for us to go. Then to sea again in the ebony trade, twill be time for us to go. Wall, said Mose Brown, I loathe that, that escape. From the dern cruiser was a blame close shave, and I myself once in as a bad scrape, was lifted out by one big thumping wave on the same line of coast, or thereabout, since it was off the bite. That's old benign, whereas the saying is, But one goes out of all a hundred strangers who go in. It ain't so healthy quite, to be exact, As tis in Colorado, high and dry, Where they send in valids, it is a fact, Off the sum of a country for to die. Excuse me, gents, for keeping you so long, Now I'll proceed to let you have my song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rolling Over by Charles Godfrey Leland Read for LibriVox.org by Andy Crunch It was upon a Boston brig, and that was in the fall. Our barky she was light as a gig for our lading was but small. And it was in the American war, as we were sailing thus, when we saw a steamer from afar, and knew she was after us, rolling over, rolling over, rolling on. The roaring waves they came, like water into fire all gone, for the sea was all of a flame. Now I have often seen by dark the sea a burning bright, But nothing did I yet remark like what it was that night, And the wake we left behind us as we sailed for many an hour Was like a fiery serpent who was chasing to devour. And then the captain made a speech to us a standing round, and said, For I'll be taken, and I'll be damned if I don't be drowned. Yet if you will be plucky men, and likewise well behaved, We've got one chance in a thousand yet, but what we may be saved. About ten miles to leeward there lies the Guinea land, And for fifty miles before it clear a narrow bar of sand, And if we find a deepish place, as such of them there are, It just is barely possible that we may clear the bar. Then we gave free cheers for our old man because we liked his dash, And allowed ere we'd go to prison that we would all go to smash, And then we set the wheel up with the steamer coming down, And never a man did care a damn if he was going to drown. Now as we came unto the bar, I happened to remark, A spot among the waves on which the water it was dark, And I showed it to the captain, who saw the place was fit, and hollered to the helmsman to steer her straight for it. Now just as we were working to this very closest shave, there came by heaven's mercy a tremendous booming wave, which gave the barky such a lift, thanks to our lucky star, that though we felt the bottom scrape, by God we crossed the bar. And as we came in the still water, we gave free roaring cheers, For the rebel he was locked outside, of him we had no fears. But I never shall forget until I come unto my grave, How we were saved on the Guinea coast by the sea light and the wave. Rolling over, rolling over, rolling on, 
The roaring waves they came, like water into fire all gone, for the sea was all of a flame. Quoth Nat of Stonington, That is a bruiser, and yet I know darned well it could be done with the third wave. But talking of a cruiser, I know a song, tis just a little one. But first I would observe that a musketeer is not an insect, for as you should know, the terms applied unto a different creter which sails about the Gulf of Mexico. Sometimes the thing is called a guard accosta, and when one did accost us with a gun, out of the way we generally tossed her. It ain't hard work to make a Grecio run. Well, that'll do. We got a song before us, and them as likes may holler in the chorus. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Mosquito by Charles Godfrey Leland Read for LibriVox.org by Andy Crunch Said Paul unto Peter, I see a musketeer, The boat's coming over the bay. Said Peter to Paul, She is saucy, though small, And the captain is sailing away. Said Paul unto Peter, Confound the old creature, the boats coming over the bay. Said Peter to Paul, We will soon make her squall, And the captain is sailing away. Said Paul unto Peter, We'll bang her and beat her, The boats coming over the bay. Said Peter to Paul, Set sunstails and all, And the captain is sailing away. Said Paul unto Peter, We'll give her short metre, The boats coming over the bay. Said Peter to Paul, Give her powder and ball, The captain is sailing away. Said Paul unto Peter, We'll roast her and eat her, The boats coming over the bay. Said Peter to Paul, we will gobble them all, and the captain is sailing away. Now, for we fairly get into the gulf, said Saltonstall, and fall into its tide, which swallows up so many like a wolf. I'll sing a song about a place outside, where a thing once took place which was a wonder. I mean the story of Old Stand from Under. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Stand from Under by Charles Godfrey Leyland Read for LibriVox.org by Emma Charlotte I was sailing in a vessel a long time ago, All the while dead against us the wind used to blow. And it seemed as if aboard us that nothing would go right. When over the Bahamas are sailing by the night. Chorus. By the night, by the night. When over the Bahamas are sailing by the night. In the dark, up in the rigging, or somewhere on high. Hello, stand from under. A voice used to cry. But the being who hallooed, it was always out of sight. When over the Bahamas are sailing by the night, On that gloomy haunted vessel, and all among her crew, Was a dark and silent sailor, whom no one ever knew. And the voice it called the loudest when that seaman came to light. When over the Bahamas a sailing by the night. And we said to him one midnight when we heard it worst of all. Your friend there in the rigging is giving you a call. Then he looked up above him with such bitterness and spite. When over the Bahama Isles are sailing by the night. 
when the voice with stern from under once again to him salamed he hallooed back like thunder let go then and be damned like a man in desperation who expects a cruel fight all over the bahamas a sailing by the night and as the word was spoken like coming to a beck a something came a-whizzing and fell down upon the deck and the body of a mariner was there before our sight all over the bahama isles a-sailing by the night and looking at the dead man he said i do declare an hour's sail from cuba i stabbed that fellow there and now he always haunts me though i killed him fair in fight all over the bahama isles a-sailing by the night but the devil a bit of fear have i of dead or living men i've lifted him before and i can lift him up again and pitch him in the water and sink him out of sight all over the bahamas a sailing by the night he grappled with the dead man in spite of all our cries when life and awful anger came in the corpse's eyes it tore him to the toffrail and held him deadly tight all over the bahamas a sailing by the night and overboard together in a grapple went the two and downward sunk before us into the water blue but in and all around them shone a corpo santo light all over the bahama isles a sailing by the night but from that very minute the wind blew well and fair and everything went right with us when we had lost the pair but i always shall remember while i live that awful sight all over the bahama isles a sailing by the night now that we're gittin towards the spanish strand said moses brown a waving his bandana i just propose that first of all a land all of us have done at the old havana adventures there to gin rally abound the natives being all susceptive creatures for if romance upon this earth be found it certainly is mong the senoritas though he who of em would advantage take must be on hand and always wide awake quien al diablo ha de engañar manana ha bien de levantar meaning that who the devil would deceive must rise uncommon early i believe that is the precious time to pick a salad as happened to the fellow in my ballad who carried off the booty as the fox took the fair hen from the two fighting cocks end of poem this recording is in the public domain Near Havana by Charles Godfrey Leyland, read for LibriVox.org by Emma Charlotte. It was down near Havana town, ho, it was down near Havana town, lo, that I saw a mortal fight at the coming on of night by the starlight a long time ago. Two Spaniards were a fighting for their lives, the blades flashed like lightning up and down to the click and the clock of the knives and there stood a lady looking on i asked her the cause of the fray and she answered in spanish oh see si, they are villains who carried me away and now they are fighting for me and i said as i looked at her face that i hardly could blame such a theft but i'll wait until one gets his grace then i'll tackle with the other who is left but just as i spoke with a start the two leapt and fell on the sand for both had been stabbed to the heart and each had his death out of hand so i and the donna were friends and that of the kindest and best 
Now here this true history ends, and you must imagine the rest. And was all near Havana town, ho, it was down by Havana town, lo, that I saw this mortal fight, at the coming on of night, by the starlight a long time ago. There sat a stranger there whom no one knew, who did not seem a follower of the sea, and yet no stranger surely to the blue, who now politely spoke the company, saying unto them, Mates tween you and me, I put it as a question. Don't you think that it is pretty near time to take a drink? And if you do belong to Gideon's band, then here's my purse to pay, and here's my hand. There was a roar of laughter loud and long, and then the stranger burst into a song. But for a minute were they all so gay, for with the words their laughter died away. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Three Dead Men, Los Tres Muertos, by Charles Godfrey Leland. Read for LibriVox.org by Tony Scheinman. Ever so far and far away, down in the hollow by the bay, where the beach is dry and the rocks are high, under the sand three dead men lie. There they lie a low, 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 nor hear the cockerels crow, where the palm trees are a-growing and the wind is ever blowing. There they lie a low, low, low. One was drowned in yonder sea, one was shot as it may be, one was left on the beach to die, but all in the hollow sleeping lie. There they lie a low, 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 nor wake at the cockerel's crow, where the palm trees are a-growing and the wind is ever blowing. There they lie a low, low, low. Sometimes when the moon is bright, you can see the three, like gulls in flight, flitting along above the waves, or sitting and talking on their graves. Where they lie a low, 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 nor hear the cockerels crow, where the palm trees are a-growing and the wind is ever blowing, there they lie a low, low, low. There was a pause when someone merrily struck up a song which all have known of old, how Billy Taylor's sweetheart went to sea, and how she fought in an engagement bold. And as the talk ran on of female sailors who've gone to sea in men of war or whalers, until I spoke and said, I know a lay about a Spanish lady, old Lang Syne, who as a sailor wished to sail away. The words are by another, and not mine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lady Sailor by Charles Godfrey Leland. Read for LibriVox.org by Alexandra Selenius. I'll go in yon boat, my mother. Oh, yes, in yon boat I'll go. I'll go with the marina, mother. And I'll be a marina too. Ay, 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 veritadero. Ay, 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 con el marinero. And I'll be a marina too. Mother, there's no refusing. What true love demands I must do. In love there's no picking and choosing. So I'll be a marina too. Ay, ay, veritadero. Ay, ay, con el marinero. And I'll be a marina too. I like those Spanish songs, the stranger said. Many I've heard and many I've read. And if you like, I'll give you one in rhyme by Gil Vincente of the oldest time, which holds his own, and bravely, one may say, for Spanish sailors sing it to this day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
The Spanish Sailor's Song by Charles Godfrey Leland, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. If you're sleeping, my dear, wake and open to me, for the hour is at hand when afar we must flee. If your white feet are bare, still no longer delay, for deep are the waters which roll in our way, the waters so deep of Guadalquivir. The hour is at hand, we must wander, my dear. Tis strange, he added, how our land in truth, as it goes southward, seems to turn to youth, and with a softer sun all worlds are sung. As things are warmed into the Spanish tongue, I've given you a song, let's have another. Well, I know one, I said, which seems its brother, although compared to yours, it's nearer zero. In Spanish, digas tu el marinero. Si dormis don seller, despertad y abrid, que venida es la hora, si queráis partir. Si descalza estáis, no queráis calzar, que muchas las aguas tenéis de pasar. Las aguas tan hondas de Guadalquivir, que venida es la hora, si tenéis partir. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lover to the Sailor by Charles Godfrey Leland Read for LibriVox.org by Alexandra Selenius Now tell me this, my sailor boy, As sure as you love your wine, Oh, did you ever see a ship As trim as that gal of mine? O oh, you who've been in many a gale, And stood on many a deck, Or did you ever see a sail As white as my true love's neck? And you who have been where the red rose blows, In many a sudden place, O oh, did you ever see a rose Like those in my sweetheart's face? Here's a cheer for the women with jet black curls, Of Spain or of Portugal, and seven for the Yankee and the English girls, the prettiest of them all. Wall now, cried Jones, I really must admit, them Spanish songs of yawn have taste and wit. But as I'm getting hungry, what is upper in me just now is that I want my supper, and while it's cooking, till they bring the tub, I'll sing you how a sailor lost his grub. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Green Corn and Potatoes by Charles Godfrey Leyland Recorded for LibriVox.org by Jude Oh, I once was in love like a sinner And the girl, she was handsome and tall She said she would cook me a dinner Of corn and potatoes and all in a pot she put ham and potatoes, one chicken, and that not too small, with gumbos and good red tomatoes, and beans and some oysters and all. On a rock by the river she cooked it, when there came up a devil of a squall, and into the water it hooked it, with the corn and potatoes and all. The ham and the beans and potatoes, all went in that devil of a squall with the chicken and big red tomatoes and carrots and oysters and all then hurrah boys hurrah for the union and the banner which waves from the wall likewise for the parsnip and onion green corn and potatoes and all the gumbos the greens and the carrots likewise for the monkeys and parrots and corn and potatoes and all. Here John of Baltimore spoke out, said he, Mates, you must know I'm going to leave the sea. I've had a fortune left me, as I learn, so now I guess I give the land a turn. I am not one who a sea life belittles, but do confess I cannot stand the victuals. You may correct me if you think I'm wrong. But first, I'll give my sentiments in song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
The Sailor's Farewell by Charles Godfrey Leland Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Hard tack and cheese goodbye, For I am going home to keep me warm and dry, No more on the seas to roam. Roast beef and turkey free, and likewise chicken pie, Salt junk, farewell to thee, Hard tack and cheese goodbye. I'm going to the land where ham and eggs they fry, Veal cutlets are on hand, hard tack and cheese goodbye. Roast duck doth there abound, and mince and apple pie, and stacks is lying round, hard tack and cheese goodbye. I smell the rich roast goose, a second slice I'll try, a third I shan't refuse, hard tack and cheese goodbye. Plank's shad is very fine, I'm in for living high, on terrapins with wine, hard tack and cheese goodbye. I seek my native soil, for soft-shelled crabs I sigh, and oysters on the broil, hardtack and cheese goodbye. Upon the canvas back myself I will apply, and hickory nuts I'll crack, a chinquapins no lack, hardtack and cheese goodbye. The buckwheat cake shall boom, the Jersey sausage fry, amid green corn I'll bloom, and hominy consume, hardtack and cheese goodbye. I see the cranberry sauce, all with my mental eye. Plum pudding I will boss, hard tack and cheese goodbye. Venison on chafing dish, with jelly by the by. Coffee and fresh catfish, hard tack and cheese goodbye. I'll soon be on the strand where luscious reed birds fly. My own, my Maryland, hard tack and cheese goodbye. Old ocean with thy foam, for thee no more I sigh, for I am going home, hard tack and cheese, goodbye. That bill of fare, cried Abner Chapin loud, it's pitched too high for this here northern crowd. New England rum, I suppose, seems rather meek, alongside peachy brandy down in Chesapeake. I don't decry your vittles by no means, but I prefer a pot of pork and beans. To all the canvas backs that ever flew, with soft shell crabs and reed birds thereunto. And all burnt offerings of fries and lambs ain't worth a dish of good Rhode Island clams. And all your Spanish mackerel, my man, worth one good mackerel caught off Cape Ann. Talking of mackerel, here Peter Young broke off this sermon with the mackerel song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mackerel Signs by Charles Godfrey Leland Read for LibriVox.org By Alexandra Selenius Mackerel clouds and mass tails A-sailing, a-trailing Make lofty ships carry low sails A-sailing, a-trailing away when the mackerel are in the sky, a sailing, a trailing, soon the wind will be blowing high, a sailing and trailing away. When the mackerel shine in the moon, a sailing, a trailing, the wind will begin to tune, a sailing, a trailing away. Of all the wind upon the seas, a sailing, a trailing. The best is an evening mackerel breeze, a sailing and trailing away. A mackerel is a sailor dish, said Jones, for it is a sailor fish, all dressed like us in white and blue, which I do call the prettiest hue, which the great heaven has to show of all the colours in the bow. So if you please, I'll sing to you a little song about a blue end of poem this recording is in the public domain true blue by charles godfrey leland read for librivox dot org by alexandra selenius blue is the sea we sail on and blue is the sky above and blue are the eyes as sea or skies of the maiden whom I love, and blue is the flag we're under, and blue is the coat I wear, but brighter the blue and deeper the hue in the eyes which I hold so dear, 
Bluer and brighter and sweeter, fonder and fairer and as true. Oh, it's blue love and true love forever, and God bless the beautiful blue. Now supper being over, every man lighted his pipe, or called for a cigar, lolled in his chair, and all again began to order something lively from the bar. Jack Seltonstall, intent on keeping peace, waved a great South Sea club and said, I'm sent by Providence to act as your police, and at a table sat as president. He was a man of pleasing dignity, and all allowed he would a captain be, calming all quarrels with a word and a wink. He had hot rum and lemon for his drink, and as he sat in state with the club of peace, which he had taken from the chimney piece, he said to us, What tales this batch could tell, Of many a battle, many a busted shell, And murdered victims by the surfy shore, And cannibally feast, when all was over. Quote Sam of Jersey, I have seen such things, Among them natives, ordered by their kings, As well might make a common pirate weep, And the old devil feel uncommon sheep. Such darned infernal deeds, all past all showing, Pirates and slavers ain't the worst folk going, There's things to which the worst they do is slow, I lived among em, I ought to know, And yet among those natives there are some, As mild as lambs, and good, and humoursome, Who never fight no more than an old hen, Such difference there is in mortal men. I'll tell you now a tale, to make you sport, of one who chanced among this gentle sort. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Story of Samuel Jackson by Charles Godfrey Leland. Read for LibriVox.org by Diana Schmidt. I'll tell you of a sailor now, a tale that can't be beat. His name was Samuel Jackson, and his height was seven feet. And how this man was shipwrecked in the far Pacific Isles, and of the heathen natives with their suppositious wiles. Now when the others cut the ship, because she was a wreck, they left this Samuel Jackson there, a-standing on the deck. That is, a-standing on the deck, while sitting on the boom they wouldn't let him in the boat cause he took up too much room when up there came a tilted wave and like a horse it romped it fell like mountains on the boat and so the boat was swamped and of those selfish mariners full every one was drowned while samuel standing on the deck beheld it safe and sound now when the sea grew soft and still and all the gale was o'er sam jackson made himself a raft and paddled safe ashore for fear of fatal accidents not knowing what might come he took a gun and matches with a prudent cask of rum now this island where he landed proved as merry as a fife for its indigence had ne'er beheld a white man in their life such incidents as rum and guns they never yet had seen and likewise in religion they were awfully jolly green but they had a dim tradition from their ancestors in course which they had somehow derived from a very ancient source how that a god would come to them and set the island right and how he should be orful tall and likewise pearly white now when they saw this samuel approaching on his raft the news through all the island shades was quickly telegraphed how all their tribulations would speedily be past cause the long-expected succor was invading em at last now when sam jackson stepped ashore as modest as you please nine thousand bloomin savages received him on their knees he looked around in wonderment regardin it as odd not bein much accustomed to be worshipped as a god but he twigged the situation and with a pleasin smile 
stretched out his hands a blessin all the natives of the isle he did it well although his paws were bigger than a pan because he was habitual a most politeful man so to return their manners and nary wise for fun he raised himself with dignity and then fired off his gun so all allowed that he must be one of the heavenly chaps since he went about with lightning and dispensed with thunderclaps they took him on their shoulders and he let it go for good and went into their city in which a temple stood and sought him on the altar and made him their salams and brought him pleasant coconuts with chickens po and yams and from that day henceforward in a captivating style he relegated as he pleased the natives of that isle and when an unbeliever rose as now and then were some he cured their irreligion with a little taste of rum he settled all their business and he did it very well so everything went booming like a blessed wedding bell eleven lovely feminines attended to his wants and a guard of honor followed him to all his usual haunts now what mortal men are made of that they can't put up with bliss i do not know but this i know that sam got tired of this he wished that he was far away again aboard a ship and all he thought of night and day was given em the slip and so one night when all was still and every soul asleep he got into a good canoe and paddled o'er the deep but oh the row the natives made when early in the morn they came to worship samuel and found their god was gone then samuel travelled many days but had the luck at last to meet a brig from boston where he shipped before the mast and he gave it as his sentiments and no one thought it odd he was better off as sailor than when sailing as a god now many years had flown away when samuel was forgot there came a ship for pearl shell unto that lonely spot they went into the temple and what do you suppose they found the natives worshipping a suit of samuel's clothes and this was the tradition of the people of the soil how once a great divinity had ruled upon their isle four fathom tall with eyes like fire and such was their believin one night he got upon the moon and sailed away to heaven while well, it's a fact cried doolittle i'll swear a rover ain't contented anywhere but if he is a real sailor slip he's happiest on the hull aboard a ship for there at times he has his tallest fun especially if tis a dandy one where all is fine oh mateys that's the thing he raised his voice and thus began to sing while up and down he merrily did prance unto the air of dance the boatman dance end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Dandy Ship by Charles Godfrey Leland, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. We've a dandy ship and a dandy crew, a dandy mate and a captain too, a dandy doctor who's a dand old sinner, and a dandy darky to cook the dinner. Chorus, it's dance, sailors dance, it's dance, the sailors dance. We'll dance all night till the broad daylight, and then go to sea in the morning. We've a dandy lot of passengers who live on chicken and sassinger, a dandy steward to steer their mess, likewise a dandy stewardess. Chorus, it's dance the sailors dance, it's dance the sailors dance. We'll dance all night till the broad daylight, and then go to sea in the morning. Shiftin and changin it is understood, said Abner Chapin, never come to good. Yes, quoth the stranger, that is very true who goes for many gets but very few who travels zigzag makes full many a cross and rolling stones ne'er gather any moss the explanation of which word is funny 
in common yiddish hebrew moss means money and stones are men take peter for a sample excuse me friends i know of an example of a loose fish who changed about so long he first became a byword then a song which i will sing you though it is distressing not that you need it as a moral lesson end of poem this recording is in the public domain jack of all trades by charles godfrey leland read for LibriVox.org by robert robinson in all trades i've been a meddler foolin my life away i started life as a yankee peddler fiddlin and foolin away didn't find the trade encouragin so i turned to a day street new york surgeon next i had a shopman for employer and then a philadelphia lawyer after that i was a smuggler then I traveled as a juggler. Next I was a collector's dunner, and after that an emigrant runner. Then I labored with some bakers. Next, for a year, I joined the shakers. But they found me too defective, so for a while I turned detective. Then I tried my hand as a teacher, and next became a blue light preacher. Then I was one of the S's editors, but had to cut to dodge my creditors. Faking oranges I tried next on, then for a while I dug as a sexton. For seven trips I was a slaver, then, as a barber, I turned shaver. After that I worked as a pirate, for all the naval sharks to fire at. Then nigger minstrel, then a sorter, off and on shorthand reporter. Then I took to reading lectures, and after that to painting pictures. Next as a drummer I did chaffer, and then I worked as a photographer. Then for a while I run a dairy, and next I turned apothecary. Then stuck placards as a billist, and so became a patent pillist. Finding all other trades deceiving, for a time I took to thieving. Now I'm a Pacific purser, and I don't think I can do any worser, fooling my life away. Yes, that's the way, said Jones, the sun goes squandering, which minds me that we too must now be wandering. And I, quoth Brown, must be aboard and early. But first of all I'm going to see my girlie. She'd blow a storm if I should fail to meet her, she is, I vum, an awful breezy creeter, a gale in petticoats and one that's stingin'. I'll sing a song on that to end our singin'. You've known the girl when, boys, I've never doubted, and here's a ballad which is all about it. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Girl Wind by Charles Godfrey Leland Read for LibriVox.org by Tony Scheinman A hurly-burly hurlwind is hurrying o'er the waves. Before it runs the girl wind, fresh up from the ocean caves. She's the little puff who goes before to tell of the blow that's coming. She sounds like a hive when winter's o'er and you hear the bees a-humming. It's all very well when a young girl can come tripping along with laughter, but not so nice when you see the old man with a big stick coming after. It's just the same with everything, when pleasure runs before us. You drink your wine and think it's fine. Then comes the tavern score us. So we went forth on our different ways, and these were wide, to many a distant shore. I to my home to put in form these lays, and think upon this strange wild sailor lore in which to him who reads with generous heart, as in a museum we seem to see, the strangest relics gathered far apart, rude, coarse, and rough, yet touched with poetry, like shells and gems and coins of olden time, and worthless stones all hardened in a mass, such as I've seen fished from the ocean's slime. Such are these men and melodies, alas! They all are of an age half passed away. Where is the boatswain now, who hears his call? And where these sailing packets once so gay? I to myself do seem traditional, And all my youth a legend, so to say. Yet well or ill, I've done the best I could To make in truthful song a little show Of quaint old tales, now little understood of the north end of Boston, long ago. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Rise and Fall of Gloryville by Charles Godfrey Leland. Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano. Newport Ritchie, Florida. Where the rockiest Rocky Mountains interview the scornful skies, and the sager kinds of sagebush in the middle distance rise. There the cultured eye descending from the dreamlike Azor Hill lights in an aesthetic foreground on the town of gloryville it was in the middle ages about the end of sixty eight so i found the hoary legend written on an ancient slate that one esri jenks prospecting when he reached this blooming spot thus uplifted to his partner glory moses let us squat thus rebounded moses adams glory was the foremost word which in the untrammeled silence of this wilderness was heard and i answer dimly feelin like a prophet grand and slow glory kinder sounds like money up to glory let her go and this casual conversation in the year of sixty eight as if by an inspiration he recorded on a slate which twas said in later ages six weeks after used to hang as a curiositary in the principal shebang on the spot that very evening they perceived a beatus gleam from a grain of shining metal in a wild auriferous stream as their eyes remarked the symptom thus their tongues responsive spoke in this undiscovered section there is pay dirt sure as smoke little boots or little shoes it to inform you how like crows to a carcass folks came flying in the town of glory rose as in country schools the urchins cast each one a spittle ball till at last a monstrous paper fungus gathers on the wall long the road they built their cabins in a visa visual way as if each man to his neighbor kind of wished to have his say but twas also said that like two rows of teeth the houses grew threatening uncommon danger to the stranger passing through yes for like the note of freedom sounded on hibernia's harp every person in the party was a most uncommon sharp and it got to be a saying that from such an ornery cuss as a regular glory villain oh good law deliver us first of all the pay dirt vanished or became uncommon rare then they wandered more than ever to the cross and from the square for when all resources failed them near a copper did they mind for they had fine answering genius which is never left behind so they got incorporated as a city fair and grand spreading memoirs of their splendor over many a distant land mind i say in distant places people near them knew into what unearthly beauty the great town of glory grew then they sent an extra governor over seas and far beyond even unto distant holland loaded up with many a bond splendidly engraved in london having just the proper touch quite imposing rather for they did impose upon the dutch and with every bond the governor had a picture to bestow of the town of gloryville a-bathing in the sunset's glow this they had performed in paris by an artist full of cheek who was told to draw a city comme il fait dans les amériques the ideas of this artist were dead from long ago out of scenery in an opera cortez in the mexico therefore all his work expanded with expensive fallacies castles towered walls pavilions real estately palaces in the foreground lofty palm trees as if full of soaring love bore up coconuts and monkeys to the smiling heaven above jet black indian chieftains at their feet two lovely girls were sighing with an elephant behind them 
here and there a casual lion you have seen in pilgrim's progress the celestial city stand like a hub and half a cartwheel raying light o'er all the land well in that it is the fellows of the wheel which caused the blaze so in gloryville the fellows were the ones who made the rays when these views were well matured the governor went to amsterdam where to minheer schmuel Genef first of all he made his slam at a glance each saw the other at a glance they went aside and without a word of bother soon the plan was cut and dried for one hundred thousand dollars then the governor at will gave away the full fee simple of the town of gloryville dot for you said schmuel Genef is i dink not much too much but i make ish de stock a million ven i sells em to de dutch and the secret of his selling was upon the artful plan known to the police in paris as the vol american whereby he who makes the spilling manages the man who split very nicely for he makes him an accomplice in the guilt even as of old great sages managed the parisian fonds so in amsterdam herr genef peddled out his glory bonds and to all he slyly whispered i will let you in de first on de ground floor sell out quickly for you know de ding may burst woe to you who live by thieving though you be of rogues the chief even the greatest will discover in due time his master thief true he let them in and truly on the very bottom floor but was with the glory villains in the cellar long before and to tell you how the betters all got bitten were in vain here the governor leaves my story and he comes not in again i will pass to later ages when all gloryville you bet found itself extreme encumbered with an extra booming debt those who sold the bonds had vanished those who hadn't held the town little knew they of its glory overseas or great renown they had nothing of the fruitage though alas they held the plant nothing saw they of the picture save indeed the elephant he who had been in the background now came trampling to the fore terribly he trampled on them very awful was his roar very dreadful is the silence when no human voice responds to a legal requisition for the interest of our bonds but ere long a shrewd reflection unto moses adam came darned if i'm a gwine to suffer for another party's game wings is given to musketeers like musketeers men can fly if a strawberry vine can travel with its roots then why not i silently in secret moses to himself a plan reveals got a three-inch plank and sawed it into surreptitious wheels and when night in solemn mystery has succeeded unto day put his hut and things on axles and quite lonely drove away to a place just over yonder by the old coyote road there no more a man of glory moses adams dropped his load and when resting from his labor and refreshing from his jug having known a town called julesburg called his shanty splendor brug on the following morn as usual in due time arose the sun and the glory villains followed his example one by one while he smiled upon the city as on other things beneath twas observed one snag was wanting in the double row of teeth little said the left behinders but they seemed to take the hint and each man surveyed his neighbor with a shrewd and genial squint all day long there was a sound of sawing timber up and down seven more houses in the morning were a-wanting in the town and before the week departed all the town departed too just like the swallows in the autumn to another soil they flew only that unlike the swallows which we hear of in the song when the glory villain squandered each one took his nest along 
all except one ancient darkey obstinate and blind and lame who for want of wheels and credit could not follow up the game so the others had to leave him which they did without regret left him there without a copper just one million deep in debt if you seek them you may find them comfortable as in a rug all of them at length established in the town of splendor bug and the driver to the traveller as by gloryville he goes points him out an ancient darkey who a million dollar owes end of poem this recording is in the public domain